the impending crypto crash. That's right, in this video, I'm gonna talk about several factors that could contribute to a massive downturn in the cryptocurrency market, including prices for both Bitcoin, XRP, and all of the major tokens. Because right now, in Washington, D.C., there is a major war going on against the crypto space, not just against Ripple, not just against XRP. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what went on just today, including the CPI numbers, the inflation data, what the government is projected to be doing in the next couple of months, and what happened at a financial services committee hearing today, and I almost can't believe what I heard some of them say. I'm also gonna be talking about what Ripple and Coinbase have in common in their fight against the SEC. John Deaton, who is a Michi in the Ripple versus the SEC case, is now speaking with Coinbase's legal counsel. I'm gonna tell you what they said and where you can see a lot more of it. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now on this channel, we are covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the Late Night Grind community. And if you do a couple things, I'd appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end. And don't forget to click that bell notification icon. That way YouTube will send you a notification when I release a new video. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's jump into it. So there's so many things to talk about, but first I'm gonna be talking about some of the economic data. The CPI numbers came out this morning and it doesn't exactly look good. Well, hang on, wait a minute. The CPI number came in at 4.9% year over year inflation. Now that may seem like a good thing because it was projected to be about 5%. So it came in under expectations, meaning inflation, the inflation rate is continuing to drop, albeit very little. But why could that be bad news? Well, here's why. The core inflation data, meaning housing, food, and energy, were all increased by, by up to 5.5% in their year over year number. So as a lot of people talk about uh, how the CPI number is basically a fake CPI number, it's not real. Regardless, as long as they track the same data month in and month out, it's good that those numbers come out. However, you gotta keep an eye on the core inflation data, and like I just said, it's not exactly good. Volatility hit the markets all across the board, cryptocurrencies, the index funds, index markets, uh, everything. Everything wasn't exactly sure how to react, and here's why. The Fed recently just said they're gonna be raising rates by a quarter of a percent. Well, it was expected to be that that was a pause or there's gonna be a pivot and possibly start quantitative easing rather than continuing to raise rates. Well, the speculation now is that in September, when the FOMC meeting minutes uh, come out and the Fed talks about what they are planning on doing to fight inflation, now the expectation is that they're going to raise rates even more and that it's going to continue for most likely several more months. Now, this puts a damper on a lot of people that thought, well, the US government has no choice but to pause rate hikes because things are looking dismal. Well, yes, they are looking dismal, but things could look a lot worse. This is one of the most important things, along with jobs numbers, that are, that are having some analysts expecting a bigger downturn in the market later on this fall, and I believe cryptocurrencies are gonna be seeing some of the first of that fall. And from some of the analysis that I've read, there are plenty of people that say this fall, the end of 2023, is probably going to be the bottom of the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin price included. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. And even if you are making six figures nowadays, chances are there's nothing left over for savings after your expenses. And even if there is some savings left over, well, chances are that inflation nowadays is eating into that. It's harder and harder to get by and even harder to get ahead. But you know, we've uncovered something really exciting. In fact, one of the only markets to go up last year, besides the energy stocks that is, is in fact the art market. Blue chip art prices have actually exceeded the S&P 500 by over 131% since 1995, that according to Citi. And even better, the billionaires haven't bought it all up yet. In fact, the global art market is expected to exceed growth of $1 trillion by 2026. And so there's still time for everyday investors, which makes what Masterworks is doing so special. And Masterworks is the awesome sponsor of this video. So I'm talking about contemporary art, and now you can actually access it in just minutes without needing millions of dollars. This, all thanks to Masterworks. Masterworks has paid out a total of $25 million to its investors, 
just last year, but that's not just a one-off. In fact, they've had two more project exits alone just last month. With nearly 700,000 users now on their platform, they actually sell out of their projects within minutes on their website or their app. In fact, they even had to create a wait list for new users that want to come in. But I got special access for you guys to skip that, and you can find that by clicking on the link in the description below. So now that there is a little bit of good news out there, I now wanted to cover what John Deaton and what Coinbase's chief legal counsel, Paul Graywall, had to say. So John Deaton, who has been covering cryptocurrency versus SEC cases for quite some time, specifically Ripple versus the SEC, among others, well, he did a 45-minute video with Coinbase's head legal counsel, and they were talking about various different factors, but the most important thing that I took away from it was their arguments about how the SEC is handling things. Now, of course, Coinbase just received their Wells notice, which is basically a notification that the SEC plans on suing Coinbase for illegal securities fraud, or at least selling these unregistered securities, it's going to be a huge legal battle, probably just as big as the Ripple one has been. Now, they talked about a lot of different things, including the timeline of Coinbase actually meeting with the SEC over 30 different times before they went IPO, in which they laid out everything with their business model. They laid out everything that they do, going over different tokens, how they list tokens, uh, when they list tokens, how they do their analysis of whether it's something it could be a security or not. And all of these different meetings, and of course, the SEC at the time approved everything, including them going IPO, which they eventually did. Now, of course, the SEC is claiming that a bunch of tokens that they listed are, unreg are unregistered securities, putting Coinbase in the crosshairs. Well, John Deaton and Paul Graywall had a great conversation. In fact, if you want to watch that full 45-minute video, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. You can go and watch the video. It's, ext it's extremely informative. He asks specifically a lot about XRP, its delisting, and there's a lot of unanswered questions there that me as well as many other XRP holders would want answered regarding why they decided to list it and then why they decided to delist it and why they kept some of the unregistered securities that the SEC is alleging listed. But regardless, it is some good information, and it looks like John Deaton is attempting to rally the troops in the crypto space, specifically Ripple, Coinbase, and among others, in fighting the SEC's overreach, and of course, the United States Congress, which is attempting to put legal clarity into place. But unfortunately, there is approximately half of the United States Congress, or possibly even more, that would, look, that would love nothing more but to essentially destroy the innovation in the crypto space. And I'm going to point to none other than the Democratic Representative Brad Sherman. So today at the Financial Services Committee hearing, our favorite, favorite Representative Brad Sherman, and it's incredibly frustrating to see how willingly ignorant Brad Sherman and several others are about digital assets, who should be regulating them, and what they should be considered, a commodity, a security, and so forth. Well, Brad Sherman has his guns blazing again at the crypto space. In fact, he actually claimed that crypto bros, as he called them, created a trillion dollars out of thin air. And then he said, well, they're going to accuse us of essentially creating money out of thin air. But that's okay, because we're the U.S. government. That was legit his quote. And there's plenty of links on Twitter where you can go and see his absurd testimony. In fact, I linked some of them in my Twitter profile, my Twitter feed. If you're not following me, there's a link in the description below. You can go and follow me there. So it looks like cryptocurrencies, the digital asset space, is finally hitting Congress, at least in terms of conversations. However, it looks like it's becoming a partisan issue. Unfortunately, some information that just came out, and Eleanor Toretto, Fox Business, recently tweeted out that she got a hold of uh, basically the Democratic notes on this meeting, in which it said all digital assets in all cryptocurrencies are considered securities. End of story. I'll link that in my Twitter profile as well. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end, for smashing that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.